to another Blue Jackets game day, and it's another Locked On Blue Jackets squadcast day, as Laura Saba of Locked On Canadians is here to talk about the game tonight. Your Locked On Blue Jackets, your daily podcast on the Columbus Blue Jackets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Blue Jacket, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am, as always, your host, Jay Foster, and uh, I'm here to give you the good, the bad, and the ugly about your favorite team and mine, the Columbus Blue Jackets. Before we do that, I want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On NHL for $20 off your first purchase. And I also want to thank you guys for making this your first listen of the day every single day. We are free and available on all podcast platforms. We are on YouTube and we are on Sirius XM. Uh, no Hayden again today, but I do have a guest. Uh, Laura Saba of Locked On Canadians is here and we're going to talk all of the, the major storylines for both teams. We're going to look at the game and uh, apparently Habs fans have decided that they should try and trade for one of the Blue Jackets. So we're going to talk about who that is and why the Blue Jackets should say no to this trade. So I'll uh, I'll just get right into my conversation with Laura. Hey, let's start with this. How are the Columbus Blue Jackets doing so far? Because I'm dreading the reverse question directed back my way. <laughs> They're doing better. Obviously, they just had that nine-game losing streak, which wasn't great. Um, but since snapping that streak, they've won three or four and have, like, they've been good wins. As well, it's not like, oh, somehow they managed to win this game. It was, okay, the players have looked good. They've been playing well. They've been getting genuinely excellent goaltending from both Elvis Mosleykins and Spencer Martin, which is not something I expected at the start of the season. Sorry to, to Elvis and Spencer, but um, they just had their best game of the season. Uh, they beat Boston 5-2. to two. You're welcome, Habs fans. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, and they looked like the better team as well, despite the fact that they played the night before and Boston was ostensibly rested. So... I love that journey for all of us. Right? <laughs> it was like, everyone <laughs> everyone is going to be happy about this. Um, <laughs> how the game's going to go tonight, I couldn't tell you, because the Blue Jackets love to do the opposite of what I think they're going to do. But it should be... It should be a fun game. Uh, usually, they are against the Canadians. I feel like they usually have uh, high chaos games, which is yes. fun, but not necessarily good for my blood pressure. <laughs> um, but the Blue Jackets look like they've maybe figured some things out. They've made it, they've turned a corner or whatever. Um, and I think we're seeing kind of a more genuine, this is what the Blue Jackets are as opposed to who they were, you know, three weeks ago when they lost seven games in a row and then decided not to show up for game eight. So... <laughs> Um, I think that's it. Like, so you've got you've got two rebuilding teams here, but Columbus is obviously way ahead in terms of who they've picked um, and who they've drafted and how they're developing. Montreal, you were talking about, you know, they seem to have figured some things out. I think Montreal is a long way from figuring things out. And obviously injuries are once again a huge storyline. It seems like everybody, you know, uh, we joke around, we have a group chat with Scott and we joke around, oh my God, who died now, right? <laughs> um, and so... With Montreal, I think the biggest thing is inconsistency. Like, we know the team is not good. We know the team has a lot of areas of improvement, right? We know that they took huge strides in their five on five game, but they still can't get regulation wins. Like, everything that they, everything that they manage to do in terms of points or goals, it happens with clawing and really fighting really hard. And it seems to be more through will than it is through ability or strategy when they're playing on the ice. And so that, that that's why I'm like really curious because I feel like Columbus at this point, like they have gotten to, they're a little bit more cohesive and you, you kind of have an idea of what their identity is supposed to be within the games, right? Like, whereas with Montreal, every night, it seems like a different team, same result. Yeah, I think Columbus is a weird team because through that nine game losing streak, they lost, those games in a bunch of different ways. You know, they played well and lost. They played poorly and lost. They had close games. They had blowouts. They had overtime losses. Like, there was a bunch of different things. Um, 
So you never really know what what Blue Jackets are going to show up that night. Obviously, there's been a lot of drama or storylines about Pascal Vincent benching star players, about healthy scratching Patrick Laine, and um, you know, it's been it's been a whole thing. But I think I, I like what he's doing with the team. And I agree. I think Columbus is probably ahead of the Canadians, not because of the fact that they're a better team, but it feels like this. The team that they have right now feels more like the team that they're going to have in, you know, two or three seasons down the line. They've got a couple of guys that are still kind of cooking, a couple of guys. Obviously, Kent Johnson's in the NHL right now. Um, they've got a couple of pieces on defense that, you know, Denton Matejchuk, uh is back in, in junior hockey, um, and I expect him to, to come over at the end of the season and be a big piece of the top four going forward. Um I feel like Montreal is still waiting for a lot of their young pieces to figure it out and to kind of be full-time NHL players. You know, obviously there was a lot of drama with Slavkovsky last season of should he be in the NHL? And then he gets injured. He doesn't go to World Juniors. He misses half of the season. And it's kind of a bit a bit of a letdown um, for, you know, what should have been a really exciting rookie season for this player. I feel like the Canadians, and I feel like this is something we talked about, maybe not the last time we recorded a crossover, but the time before, of like, there are a lot of players in their system that don't have room in the big club right now because they've got too many big, weird contracts. That they exactly. Need. Anderson, I'm looking at <laughs> you. <laughs> I was going to say, like, there people should be taking, like, like bets on to how long it's going to take one of us to mention Josh Anderson. Uh, you were talking a little bit about... If you had 736, <laughs> you win a million dollars. Yes, but uh, please see, I don't know, Elon Musk for your dollars, because <laughs> I don't have them. Um, but yeah, so we're going to talk a little bit more about the storylines. Uh, you know, we're talking about benching. There's a lot going on in Montreal as well. Uh, and we'll talk about that in the second segment. But I think real quick, uh, one, let's let's do like three keys type thing. Okay, what is one thing that the Blue Jackets have to avoid? What is one thing they have to do? And what is one unpredictable wild stat that, or wild, you know, outcome or result that you are going to come out with? The Blue Jackets need to figure out the power play. Power play is very, very bad. Once again, um, they are 28th in the league, but the Montreal Canadiens are 27th in penalty kills. So this feels like they scored a power play goal against Boston. Um, which is great because Boston has like the third best penalty kill in, in the league right now. So like, is this a good sign? Maybe I, I, that's kind of my, my one thing. Um, my wild stat slash prediction is, um, I think Erica Branson's going to score a goal. Why? I don't know. I just, sometimes you get a feeling that a random player is going to score a goal. Um, and I forget what the third thing that you asked me was. I said, what's, uh, what do they need to do? What do they need to avoid? Um, and what your wild, you know, prediction is. So you had your prediction and you yes. had what they needed to do better. So what do they need to avoid? Uh, crime, mostly. <laughs> uh, they need to take fewer penalties. Um, like, the penalty kill is great. The penalty kill is currently second in the league. Uh, it's like 0.2% behind first place, which is LA. Um, the penalty, yeah, the penalty kill is genuinely excellent this season. However, just because you have a good penalty kill does not mean you can test that faith. And the Blue Jackets love to take stupid penalties. Um, so I would think that I would like them to avoid doing that. Just because the Montreal power play is uh, incompetent. Uh, <laughs> Sorry um, to sorry it, to the it, Habs. It's not good. It's it's not power, good. Just because power play is bad doesn't mean that you should like <laughs> test that by doing a bunch of crime. And the exactly. Blue love to do crime. <laughs> Speaking of crime, I'm going to talk about uh, what the Canadians need to do, what they need to avoid, and a wild prediction. And then we're going to get into the major storylines in both markets. And that is all coming up in just one moment here on Locked On Canadians slash Locked On Blue Jackets. But first, this episode is brought to you by Game Time. 
how often do you find out an artist that you love is going to be in town and then you miss the vote on buying tickets and you scramble, you end up overpaying, you keep trying to get your hands on tickets and this keeps happening to me. But guess what? It stopped happening to me since I discovered game time because getting tickets should not be as stressful as I've made it in the past. Game time has flash deals and it's so easy to use. It is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what you're going to expect when you arrive. How much do you hate it when you overpay for a seat and then you end up and there's like a column or something in front of you? Game time does not have that. And the all-in prices are going to show your total up front so you know you're getting a great deal without hidden fees. Do not get me started on hidden fees. Game time, no hidden fees. Buy tickets in seconds with two taps because, you know, game time is here for you. You can take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code locked on NHL for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right. So. I want to talk a little bit about what the Montreal Canadiens need to do, avoid, and a wild prediction. Uh, and then we're going to get into the major, major storylines in each market that have been going on since the last time we talked. Uh, so for what the Canadians need to do, obviously hit the net. Um, their forwards need to regain their scoring touch. That's the biggest thing. What they need to avoid is falling apart as a team on defense. You just talked about the penalty kill. But it's not like the team defense is much better. Every single night, it seems like we have, when we're doing a game recap, we talk about, you know, the goaltender had a terrible save percentage, but it's not like he had much to work with because he kept getting bombarded, right? So that's a huge um, huge thing to avoid for the Canadians is not fall apart on defense. And a wild prediction is going to be that this game is going to go into overtime or shootout. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't even know if that's even wild or out there at all. At this point, it's just a mundane prediction. It's been a minute since the Blue Jackets have had a game go to overtime, so we are we are overdue. Um, it's a prime. It went you know, to overtime last time, if I remember rightly. <laughs> they did. And then Cole they Caulfield did. ruined my evening. Yes, but he's not <laughs> ruining many evenings lately, unless you're a Habs fan. Um, I kid. He's going to find his game. He's going to be okay. You know, all Cole Caulfield worry is overblown. Um, but speaking of overblown, that is one of the major storylines in Montreal this season. We talk so much about the injuries, but Cole Caulfield has been underperforming for a variety of reasons. And people are throwing the blame on his injury. They're throwing the, the blame on him. They're throwing the blame on his line mates. They're throwing the blame on Marty. And sometimes I think a player just slumps. It's not like it's it's not like the same as the 2020-2021 season. Or was it, no, it was, yeah, it was, when did they, they went to the, the Stanley Cup final in 2021. Um, yes, so the 2021-2022 season, the Dominic Ducharme the season. Ducharme. The Ducharme yeah. season. But so do you, right so who in Columbus, and I know we just talked about, you know, people being benched and people being unhappy, but who in Columbus is legitimately underperforming according to expectations? Well, Johnny Gaudreau has six points in, excuse me, 11 points in 23 games. That's un-Johnny Gaudreau-like numbers. Uh, Patrick Laine has six points in 13 games. Again, I'm reading the wrong column. I'm very <laughs> sorry. Gaudreau has 11 points in 23 games. Laine has five points in 13 games. I wow. think it's fair to say that both of those guys are underperforming. That being said, Johnny Gaudreau is currently third on the team in scoring right now because this team doesn't know how to score goals which is worrying and frustrating in in a lot of different ways um because this team is not really built for defense this team is built to score goals and it worries me that they're not scoring goals so um definitely those two guys um i would also put i've lost my stats tab uh i also might put someone like um Alexander Texier on that list. Uh, he has obviously just come back from a season in Switzerland, um, and then he missed most of the, la the season before that as well. Uh, he's got seven points in 21 games, but he's getting top six minutes right now. So I would expect a little bit more out of Texier. Um, but on the flip side, there have been guys, uh, I would say, over-performing. Um, Erica Branson 
is, I believe, eight points away from his career high. And it's 20 games into the season. His career high is 17 points. Uh, and he's currently got nine points in the first 23 games of the season. Uh, so he's loving life right now. Uh, Zach Brensky has 15 points in 21 games. Ivan Provorov, 14 points in 23 games. So, like, ironically, the defense is doing the offense thing really good. But the forwards are not doing the offense real good right now, um, which feels like a problem that's going to come. It'll fix, like, it'll even out. Guys that are underperforming will regress to the mean. Guys that are overperforming will probably regress to the mean as well. But right now, it feels very much like Johnny Gaudreau can't buy a goal. And that's frustrating, which I imagine is how Canadians fans feel about Cole Caulfield. Very much so, but also Josh Anderson. Like, Josh Anderson seems to be a big topic for conversation here. I'm not just bringing him up gratuitously because it's me and Jay doing a podcast. Like, he has been a a topic of conversation. He seems to be playing his way out of that um, that trade talk. And, you know, there's so many NHL GMs that fall in love with that player type. He's struggling. It's not like he's not trying. It's just that he's not able to get the right things together. But on the flip side, somebody who's quietly performing surprisingly well is Christian Dvorak since he got back. And unfortunately, the Canadians as a whole can't get it together enough to showcase that. It's quite subtle, but I think he's doing a really good job. Uh, So do you have... And it's not that it's surprising or not surprising. Like I just feel like Christian Dvorak is the type of player where the way that, you know, so there are some players that the team plays the way that that guy plays, right? So, like, if that guy has a great game, the whole team's having a good game. And then if that guy's having a poor game, that, you know, the whole team's having a, a, a poor game. And that's, like, somebody like Andre Markov, for me, is, like, the quintessential example of that. And now, with Christian Dvorak, he's not like that. He's the exact opposite. He's the guy that you expect to have bad stats when the team as a whole is doing badly and good stats when the team as a whole is doing well. But he's not. He's actually outperforming the team in a lot of the underlying me- metrics, which is really surprising and really, really good. And obviously, it bodes well for the Canadians' chances of trading him. Do you have any unexpected positive surprises like that on Columbus? Um, I mean, I guess, the, like, to go back to goaltending, that's, like, my biggest thing we spent so Hayden and my co-host Hayden uh, and I spent all of the summer being like listen we don't need Elvis to be Vesna level good we need him to be league average good um and the team has had kind of a rough start to the season Elvis has had a couple of shaky nights but and this is not like Vesna numbers by any stretch of the imagination but he's currently rocking a 907 save percentage um Spencer Martin is rocking a 903 save percentage. I don't genuinely do not remember the time the Blue Jackets had two goalies with an above 900 save percentage. And kind of the Habs are in that same boat of uh, Jake Allen and Samuel Montebo are all are both playing excellent hockey right now, despite the team in front of them doing their best. Question mark. Um, so the goaltending has the been a really, mark. really pleasant surprise. <laughs> uh, because I I don't worry about I'm not worried about the goaltending right now. And I don't remember the last time I wasn't worried about goal. Like, I think this is the first time since Sergei Bobrovsky left that I'm like, oh, I, I'm not worried about goaltending anymore. Am I worried about everything else? Sure. But the goaltending has been uh, exceptional for this team, which was not in my list of things that I thought I would be saying this season. <laughs> Uh, honestly, that's one of the things that I also wasn't expecting to say about the Habs this season, but not because I thought the goalies were bad. It's because it's such a question mark in goal at all levels mm-hmm. of this organization right now that we didn't know which Samuel Montembeau was going to come out. We didn't know which, you know, Caden Primo, he's not played a lot, but, you know, we don't we didn't know which version of him was coming or Jake Allen as well. And, you know, you look at the you look at Allen and Montembeau's stats and it's pretty decent. And actually... In our next segment, we were going to talk mostly, or we are going to talk mostly about about whether or not the Canadians should target Igor Shinnikov. But uh, I did want to bring up the constant discussion about Jack Campbell in this league. Um, and that is all coming up in just one moment here on Locked On Canadians and Locked On Blue Jackets. But first, this episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. 
eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or you get your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. All right. So, my good friend, Jay, uh, before we get into Columbus Blue Jackets, well, it was a listener that actually brought it up, and we'll get into that in a second. But first, there's been a lot of talk in this market about the Canadians trading one of their goalies, usually Allen, to Edmonton and taking on Jack Campbell's contract for some sort of sweetener from Edmonton. So, my theory, not my theory all along, my contention all along has been that Jack Campbell just wasn't this goaltender. Like he was just like a mediocre goaltender and he had a hot streak in Toronto and everybody thought that he was a world beater. Like people are like, oh, he lost his game, all of that. I just said, look at the sample size, right? So like, to me, I don't fault Jack Campbell in this. Like, you know, I played well on a team for a while. I wanted to go somewhere else and get paid. That team was willing to pay me a lot of money. I'm going to take it. It was kind of like Kotkaniemi signing that that offer sheet, right? Like somebody's offering me a lot of money, so I'm going to take it. But at the same time, for me, it's a, what was Edmonton thinking? And as a lot of our listeners are saying, like, why should any team in the league help Edmonton out with that cap space? So you being a goaltender yourself, like what are your thoughts on Jack Campbell overall? Yeah, I, I fully agree with everything there. And I think this is something that we talked about a little bit last time um, we, we did a show together, which is people love to yell at players for getting paid too much money. But if someone came into your place of business and was like, hey, would you like five and a half million dollars a year for the next five years to do something that you're not very good at? You'd be like, obviously, yes. No, no, please pay me less money to do this. You know, like it's people get so up, hung up on players being overpaid when they should be blaming the GMs for offering that contract. Like I think shout out to Jack Campbell. He he got paid uh, a lot of money and then immediately was not worth it. So like Ken Holland is, is the one to blame here. Um, I don't watch the Oilers enough to have any kind of like specific insight into Jack Campbell specifically i didn't really rate him as a goalie when i was watching him with toronto um he but was fine he was he just was like a guy fine, yeah but i think he was one of those guys who's who was not having a particularly difficult time in toronto and now he's in edmonton where the defense is non-existent yeah, that's that's a, a kind way of, of saying it. Um, no wonder the guy's struggling. And it's not even that he, it's, I also want to say that I don't think this is a Jack Campbell specific problem because every single goalie that they've played has had problems. Like Stuart Skinner had an excellent year last year. Um, Calvin Pickard has, is Calvin Pickard, you know, both of those guys are also struggling. This is a systematic, a, a systemic problem. For the Oilers, it is not Jack Campbell's fault that he is playing poorly. Um, I think you could probably put many goalies in that system. And this is the thing. People are like, okay, well, they should trade for Jake Allen because Jake Allen will magically thrive playing with the Oilers systems when looking at it, something else has to change. Because if you're playing three different goalies with three different skill sets and different, you know, levels of tenure in the league, different levels of experience, whatever, and they're all sucking. Maybe you're the problem, (laughs) you know? And I don't think going out and paying a bunch of, like, they'll overpay for a goalie. I know that they were in town. They were in Columbus. Um, There's three scouts at the Columbus um, Bruins game, probably scouting Spencer Martin, um, the Blue Jackets backup, who's been very good. They'll overpay for him. He will get to Edmonton and then immediately struggle behind a truly catastrophic defensive system. And this is not me saying that the defensemen are bad in in Edmonton. It is the systems 
that are the problem. And that's the thing, like they have historically um, overpaid defensemen that weren't suited to their system or maybe were just a little bit past their prime or, you know, they weren't they weren't well thought out choices. But at this point, like it, it's it, the same thing that you talked about with the goalies is replicated on defense, right? It doesn't matter who they put in there. The system ends up breaking them. So that was just I wanted your thoughts because you are a goaltender and you have a little bit more of a better idea of how to um rate and scout goalies uh so that's why i wanted to bring that up but before i let you go jay i would like to ask you a question and the question is should the montreal canadians target yegor shinnikov somebody brought this up in our youtube comments and at the same time i learned uh from you that today some news has been coming out that he's dissatisfied in columbus is that that is that is so that is my my understanding of it um and i want to preface this Blue Jackets fans uh, with should the Habs target him? Yes, absolutely. He's a very good young player that is this close to putting it together. He has missed uh, large parts of his uh, entry-level contract tenure with injuries. Um, He missed the start of this season with a back strain, so he hasn't played a ton. Um, But I'm a huge believer in Igor Chinakov. I think he's... uh, He's got speed, he's got skill, he's got smart, he's got an incredible shot. Um, yeah, the Habs should absolutely target this as a player. Does he fix the Habs' problems? Probably not. But if you have this opportunity to go out and get a good player, then yeah, you absolutely should. The Blue Jackets should not let go of Igor Chinikov, is, is where I stand on this. Um, depending on what Habs give up for, for Chinikov... Um, and I don't know, like, I, I don't know the roster well enough off the top of my head to be like, hey, that's something we should target. This is something we should target, things like that. But, um, in terms of context, uh, as to him being dissatisfied, obviously, there was a big thing over the weekend that a different Russian player, Dmitry Voronkov, very highly touted, came over, doesn't speak any English, um, was homesick, was struggling, which, fair, if you put me in Russia right now, I would also be homesick and I would struggle because I don't speak Russian and, you know, I don't know anyone there. And so he didn't have any like friends or family come over with him. But over the weekend, apparently he's kind of turned a corner and has, you know, is is much happier in Columbus now, I think, due to the fact that all of the fans had this outpouring of, no, we love you. We want you to stay. The players, the team, everyone has kind of really come together to try and convince him that, yeah, no, you don't want to go back to the KHL. You want to stay here. It's great news for Columbus because he's been excellent. Um, on the back of that, because we can't have anything nice, it's come out that Igor Chinikov apparently is, is unhappy in Columbus right now. He wants more ice time. He wants more responsibilities. Um, he hasn't officially asked for a trade, but... The rumor out there is that he wants more than he's getting right now from Columbus. All of this has come from his Russian agent, I should say. So, like, is this a tactic to get more money? He's up for a new contract this summer. So, like, could be. But uh, definitely something for Blue Jackets fans, I think, to monitor. Um, But also, we heard all of this stuff about Ken Johnson two weeks ago when he got sent down to the AHL. What is that? He wants out of Columbus. He hasn't asked for a trade yet, but he's gonna. So... I feel like it's probably all a little bit overblown. If there's an official trade request or someone more reputable reports it, I will probably listen. But as of right now, players are but there's there's a constant media cycle of oh, this player's under this player's underperforming, he must be unhappy. People are talking about Gaudreau requesting a trade back to Calgary because he's unhappy in Columbus. Like, stop. <laughs> It. it seems you're, like just, you're just saying words to say words at this point, <laughs> you know. Like, if he's unhappy, then obviously I don't want to. If he's unhappy in Columbus, then obviously I would rather him go somewhere that he is happy. But I think it's probably going to be a he's not going to get a better opportunity on a different team, I don't think. And that's the thing, like, I feel like there's like a common thread to all these stories, right? Like, in Columbus, it's just all too easy to talk about a player wants out because it's Columbus, right? right. Whereas, like, in Montreal, you you know, there everybody's always churning the does he speak French thing. It's the, you know, like, or like with, a, with an external player, he, he dreams of playing in Montreal thing, like all of that kind of stuff. Like, there's always a common thread to all the storylines. And sometimes you just think that, like, some of it is obviously very clearly made up. Um mm-hmm. 
And I'll tell you what's not made up, though, is this show. <laughs> we did it, Jay. We did we it. Did it. <laughs> um, all right. So, Jay, why don't you tell all the lovely listeners where they where they can find you and your work? Uh, yes, you can find Locked on Blue Jackets wherever you get Locked on Canadians. We're on every podcasting app of choice. We are on YouTube. We are over on Sirius XM. Uh, if you want to pay attention to the, th- the other things that I do, uh, I currently... Uh, I'm one of the editors and contributors over at AHL News Now, so uh, go check out our AHL coverage over there, and you can find me on Twitter at underscore Jacob Foster, J-A-K-O-B-F-O-R-S-T-E-R. Thank you so much, Jay. And for your listeners, we can be found wherever you get your podcasts as well as on YouTube, exactly where you can get Locked on Blue Jackets. Uh, on Twitter, we are at LO underscore Canadians. I'm at The Active Stick and my co-host is at Scott Matla, uh, not uh, Jacob Foster. <laughs> um, <coughs> but yes. I'm going to change my Twitter handle to not Scott, to not Matla. Not I think. Matla. <laughs> yeah. Just, just, I love to commit to a bit. Scott and not. What happens yeah. if you guys are on a show together without me? Like, is it Scott and not? Like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for listening. And I have a very special treat for all of you Canadians listeners coming up. Jerome, Bar- Jerome Barube will be joining us for a prospect mailbag. So please get your questions in all about the prospects and get them in as soon as you possibly can so we can feed them to Jerome and he can prepare his stats because we will have a prospect heavy mailbag episode this week. Thank you so much for listening and we will talk to you then.